Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and to my 2003 Porsche Boxster S. To recap for anyone that hasn't seen this car yet, I bought this, well, almost probably two months ago now for the incredible price of £3,800. It's got 130,000 miles on it. It's a 986S and it's in a beautiful silver over blue specification. And if you enjoy these types of videos where I seem to buy my childhood dream cars for very affordable prices, then do go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you're one of my 70% of regular viewers that are not already. And with that, today we are in the Boxster again. This car has only been on the channel, well, once when I bought it, and secondly, when I took it for a little adventure to the Isle of Wight. Now, during that trip, an engine management light came on, and I was able to clear it, as it turned out to just be a sensor issue. Now, truth be told, I've done a thousand miles in the car since then, and the light hasn't come back on until yesterday, when I took it for about a 120 mile run same code came up i was able to clear it again so apart from that the car honestly has been completely completely faultless but today i guess we're going to see why i underpaid for this car i still think that i just got a good deal the guy that was selling it just wanted it gone he was selling it on behalf of someone else they dealt with some really really high-end stuff i mean seven figures sort of stuff so I have an inkling they just wanted this shifted. It wasn't that much money to them anyway, but let's not get ahead of ourselves because we're taking the car down to E Porsche this morning. Now, uh, I don't know the guys here. I've never been there before. I was just researching Porsche specialists. I've spoken to them a couple of times. They seem keen. They seem interested in looking at the car and they seem passionate about what they do. So that's where I'm taking the car this morning to have a major service of what I've booked it in, but I've also asked them to just have a little look at the car as well, because this hasn't been up on a ramp yet since I bought it. So really, I have no idea what's going on underneath here. I have no real reason to think there is anything untoward going on, because as I say, the car is just sublime. But needless to say, the guys this morning will be able to tell me if that's the case or not. So got about a one hour drive now down the motorway how fun uh, to go and see these guys they're down in Bisley I think near Woking and we'll have a look at the car maybe chat with them there whether they think I bought a good example or not so let's drop down a few gears whilst we're still on a relatively nice road tell you what let's listen to this little I'll see you there Okay, so we've made it now down to E Porsche near Woking in Surrey in the Boxster S. Did about 70 miles in it this morning, took about two hours with good old British traffic, but nothing untoward. It's a relatively comfortable car actually to drive, just not the best in this sort of weather. I do long for a really warm sunny day where we can get the lid down and really just enjoy the car. But we're just waiting for a ramp to become available now. And then we're gonna get it up. We're gonna have a look around, do a bit of an inspection obviously see if there's anything untoward going on with components hanging off the car or anything like that. I'm hoping that it's gonna be okay. And then what I've actually booked it in for today is a full service, I think spark plugs, oil change, and a few other bits. We'll find out anyway as we go. Okay, I'm, I'm Roly, uh, I own e Porsche. I started it in 2003, so it's quite a long time ago. At that time I was selling cars. I'd had a 964 for uh, five years, thought I knew all, uh, all about cars, all, all about 911s and Porsches in general, but that turned out not to be the case. So it, I did learn a lot about Porsches in the first few years and after a while, moved to a slightly bigger location and got more cars and eventually started this, this uh, service place to to look after our own sales cars and also to service our customers cars so we have an, a, a separate sales car location 
which is about a half a mile away. And, uh, and we have the workshop. And since then also we've expanded into a, a separate parts business called Spider Performance. And also recently uh, I bought a, another business called La Rose Porsche with my business partner, Dean. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much where we are. So here we check uh, the suspension for play. There is slight play, which is normally, these suffer from inner steering rack joints. But I think that's actually the outer. Um, I'll double check that in a minute. Um, top mounts are very common. They part um, and the bearings go just in there. I don't know if you can see, yours is actually starting to part there. Okay. Um, that's quite, that's a, quite a common thing on boxes and 911s. Same suspension set up at the front. You've also got coolant lines that run behind here and brake lines run across here as well. And then as you walk around the car, you just visually check in the car. You can look through these grills here. Now, these AC condensers sit in front of the radiators in these grills and they're very susceptible for damage. Okay. And also leaves get in there and they rot and they yep. can damage your um, AC condensers and radiators as well. There are a couple of leaves in there, but nothing I'd be too worried about. But it looks like the radiators and condensers have been replaced on this car recently. That black bit behind is the radiator and they actually look, it looks like someone's done the radiators as well as the condensers. Okay. And then we come around to this side, which is the same deal really. You can pull these down and the moisture, this is common on these cars, the moisture actually sits behind um, these bump stops. Right. Okay. And it rots yeah. the top of the damper and that's actually a washer. Down here, you've got a bit of dampness. I don't know whether you can see under there, under that oh, yeah. gator there, coming, that's your steering rack gator. So your steering rack's got a, possibly a slight weep yeah so far so far, nothing so far for that for that money i don't I, I don't think you've got a bad car to be if i'm if i'm honest check the brakes they're literally like brand new really yeah they are literally like and how much would it cost for sort of a full set of discs and, and pads and all of these? front discs and pads and rear discs and pads around um i think you're looking somewhere in the region of about seven 700 off the, off the top of my head, something like that, I would guess. These springs can break. Not very common, but I have done them before. The damper body is slightly corroded, but as you would expect on a near on 20 year old car, yeah, you yeah. know. Tire valves, these are commonly missed, should be checked. Th these can perish, these valves. And it's, it's, it's quite, I've seen some really bad ones um, on cars that have obviously sat around and they yeah. perish and it, that's quite bad because obviously if that if that breaks there it's all well, your air goes out but if yeah. it's happening down the motorway you're you're good night really okay. someone has spent some money on this car though Do you think? yeah yeah because all the brakes are brand new the front obviously rads and acs have all been yeah. done yeah it's um so major service always, always take the wheels off on a major service minor service don't tend to but definitely on a major just so you can see more because sometimes the brakes could look all right on the outside and then you look on the inner and they can actually be a lot lower, but th these are fine, so, yeah. Brake lines, these have all been replaced by the looks of it. What we tend to advise if you, if you want to keep the car up together and avoid replacing these again is we, we clean them up and just put some spray wax over them just, yeah. to, just to, so they last a bit longer really. Yeah. Um, suspension we can look at from underneath. These are known as tuning forks in the Porsche world. There is, a slight, there is a slight bit of play in that one. So these have got like a, there's, there's a joint um, and they just wear and they're quite common. So these are tuning forks. These are coffin arms. They're known yeah. in the trade. Obviously, because these bushes are rubber, they part and split. Yours are starting to go, which is no great surprise. You're probably going to look on this car, which you probably know, you're probably going to look at a bit of a suspension refresh because yeah. you've got your top mounts that are parting. You've got a bit of a noise from, definitely from this tuning fork, maybe the rears and these arms. And these coffin arms are actually on the back as right, well as yeah, the front. Yeah, yeah. So nothing's gonna fail completely that it's gonna fall off. I mean, it's, ju it's just a, a donk donk when you go over bumps. Yeah. It's annoying. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. 
and these bushes here and these bushes the car might start to handle a bit a bit a bit differently a bit funny you know we would just say look this is we would advise doing it but it all comes down to your budget and yeah. things like that so so people know what to expect in the future yeah. you know i wouldn't put that as a red or high priority i would just put it on an amber list and then yeah if someone wants to come back in six three months six months to a year's time oh yeah i've got all the money now we'll do a suspension refresh you do all that a geometry and then your car's all nice you don't have to worry about the suspension for another maybe, ten years, maybe. five ten years yeah maybe yeah it's just a plastic under tray these can get damaged because obviously they're at the front again and yeah things yeah. can get stuff on them you've got coolant pipes run all the way down the middle it's covered up by another under tray we have power steering lines that run down here and brake lines over here and fuel lines and stuff it might be a weird thing to say but i it's the first time i've stood under a porsche at least it's my own yeah and it does just seem like it's very well put together it's 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 Nothing's pretty good off, no it's, it's, it's clean it's pretty good because as i say sometimes you see these under trays that all smashed and flapping about and yeah, yeah. and you know and they're 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 not cheap they're not cheap no. which is obviously why they don't get replaced they come in all hanging off and stuff yeah, but um but yeah i mean if if you look if you look under that 993 over there that's the same deal with everything all covered from the front yes yeah wow, but this is all the way to the back wow and this this is air cooled this is a was this 80s late 80s early 90s no this is uh mid 90s, mid -90s. 993 yeah wow and I mean, that's the same sort of deal. So coming around now, we have the engine, which is obviously mid-engine. That's a very common fault on... Okay. On, not a fault, it's just, they, they leak and they weep. Do you know where that's coming from? If, that's if either the, the rear main oil seal or the intermediate shaft or IMS uh, shaft the seal. The IMS bearing. Do you, I mean... Yes. When... You go onto any boxster forum or talk to anyone about a boxer. Yeah, I'm, say, I, I want to buy one. Is I, the IMS been done? Yes. Yeah. What's your, I mean, reality wise, I mean, <laughs> this I have no idea if it's been done, but it's on 130k. Yeah. So if it hasn't been done, it's probably not going to go bang, is it? My, my take on it, I'm going to get probably a lot of, a lot of flack for this. My, my take on it is um, I've only ever seen two fail. Really? Yes. And you must have seen thousands. Uh, I've, I've, many, seen, I've, many hundreds. I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot, yeah. And I've only ever seen two fail. Um, when they do fail, though, the engine goes. Yeah. So they're kind of a little bit of a myth to me. You, you know, I, I shouldn't say that, but I'm probably getting a lot of stick for it. But they're a bit like, well, don't fix what's, what's not broke. Yeah, yeah. In my experience. But if you're, if you're getting your clutch done, you know, if you're having a new clutch and flywheel, then maybe, maybe, in, and, and you're worried about it, yes, then, just yeah, it. we can upgrade it for you. We it. can upgrade it for you. But yeah, that, I mean, that leak is probably a little bit worse than the normal, but you don't know how long that's been leaking for, etc. Right. So what we would do in the service, we would say, yeah, the rear main oil seal area is wet. We would clean it off and then when I come back, monitor it. When I come suspension done, then we can see. How then we have a look and say, Oh no, actually, it's, it's, it's just a tiny bit damp. So, and if it's like that again in three months, then we'll that, then we'll, we'll have to address something. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry, really. Another common thing on these cars is the, the exhaust, because obviously they're hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, yes. cold, corrode. The manifold's getting a bit thin up there, and the bolts are, are disappearing. But that that is where it joins to the head up there. I see, yeah. So that is the manifold. I mean, I've seen them, I've, I've, I've seen them like that, and three years later, they're still the same. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's these flange fixings, these are common. People knock them out, which we do. So they, they come with studs on, this, on these caps, and we, um, you heat them up with acetylene, knock them out. Someone's replaced them with normal nuts and bolts. We use stainless. They're just more durable, last longer, and it's, and it's far better. You've got your core packs, obviously six of them, because you've got six six spark plugs, three on each, each bank. They crack. The, you've got the old star, the original star one here. Oh, right. But they actually don't look in bad condition, to be honest. You've got brake lines that, uh, all these have been replaced, same as the front ones. Uh, Anti-roll bar, that looks like that's been replaced at some point. If I paid the money you'd paid for it, I, I certainly wouldn't be unhappy. 
Uh, right, so we've carried out the spark plug replacement. So we've removed the core packs. Uh, with removing the core packs, you can then um, further inspect them for any cracks or anything. As I said, yours were the old type, but they look in pretty good condition. There's no cracks um, on them or nothing, nothing uh, that I would say all needs changing. Sometimes you pull them out and they're cracked underneath. I've drained the oil um, sump plug. We put a new, new sump plug washer on, uh, give it a clean, a bit of brake cleaner, and then a new seal. You torque this up, 50 newton meters is the torque. Are these boxes quite labour intensive because of where the engine's located or actually is it quite accessible? Uh, yes and no. Parts of it are quite tricky to work on. Yeah. Other parts are not so tricky. The spark plugs aren't too bad once you're underneath really, to be honest. But stuff from above, you know, is because you've got that small hole um, underneath the hood, which is quite, it can be quite tricky to to get to things, but most things you can do, most things you can do with the engine in situ. So when you take these filters off, we were talking about the IMS uh, earlier, IMS bearing. Now, as I said, I, was, I, was, uh, I thought it was a bit of a, they're, they're sort of over talked about. Yeah. So there's your oil filter check that that does look like it's been in there for a while to be fair as you can see it's all a bit sort of sucked in because these oil filters sit right on the bottom of the engine you can actually would you be able to pick up some sometimes or... sometimes you can see so if you have one with like a you were suspecting there was an engine issue you can pull the filter out and just have a look but th this looks all right sometimes sometimes you can see bits of metal in it and stuff but yeah um, as I say we look in here and that's actually clean sometimes sometimes you see bits of iron filings in there and stuff like that which could be early signs of a IMS or it could just be general but yeah that looks fine to me Perfect. yeah so then we're ready to drop the car down really I'm going to give this a quick clean off and then we're ready to drop the car down put the wheels back on. Yeah, and then we'll put some oil in it. Do all the other bits up top, air filter. Finish your service off, run it up, a road test, and then you'll be on your way, really. So, I think these suffer from, and 911s, it's, it's, it's essentially the same. So, battery cover, take that off. There's two torque screws, pull those covers off. We check these on a service, because um, as you can see, all the leaves get down here. And right down here, down here in this corner, there's a, a rubber like drain. And all the leaves end up down there, and all the dirt. And there's another one just back here you can't see because it it's under it's right under here and also on the other side so if we go around to here as you can see all the leaves and there is is it a bit wet no but there's a drain down right down there where all those leaves are bunched un under there under that power cable and down here um, they oh, just yeah. get blocked up and then basically get block solid water obviously runs down here, water can't get out, so it comes up over the top, comes into the cabin. Then you end up with water in the car, which is not, which is not ideal. No, you don't really want <laughs> no, to, do you? No, uh, Rear drains, so you, they have these like foam drip trays in here. Oh yeah. So the water comes down and it gets directed around here, through this hole here, and they come out in front of the rear wheel so the water will run out. These drains can also become blocked so it's quite essential you keep this clean. Also the, these if you're ever working in here if you've got a screwdriver or something like that it, it, you, they're quite easily pierced so you can quite easily actually go through it and then as soon as there's a hole in that 
water in the car under the passenger seats, control unit, alarm control unit, quite expensive repair. It's quite common on these. So yeah, it's just, you know, if you've got a Boxster, it just takes 20 minutes to clean all those drains out and just keep them clean. And then you don't end up with water in your car and costing you hundreds of pounds to repair. Okay, so oil change has been done. The car's back down. It's now switched on and we're warming it up so that we can check the level again, check the oil is all fine. And then it will go out on a road test and then we're pretty much done. Now, look, I'm gonna ask you the question I asked with all of my cars. It sounds nice, this Porsche, let's be honest. It's a beautiful, beautiful sound, especially when you're driving it actually, because that engine is so close. But should I do any modifications to the exhaust? If I'm being totally honest with you, I would like it to be a little bit louder. Don't want to go crazy with it because I don't want this one to drone like my Z4 used to, but should I at least maybe take the baffling out of the back box or something? What do you guys think? Comment below. Or I should leave it as it is, or I should do some sort of exhaust modification. And if you have any suggestions for that, do please feel free to comment as well. Boxster going out for the road test, then Chris is going to take it out, check everything is all fine. Once it's back, we'll have another look at the oil level, make sure that's all sorted, and then we're going to be good to go. What we're going to see though is, well, firstly, how much this service costs, because that is an interesting point, isn't it, with these Porsches? Are they actually that expensive to maintain? Are they more than my former Z4, for example? I'm actually <laughs> pleasantly surprised and, and very happy. So I thought I would just quickly summarize the video the next day because it was, as you can see, dark by the time we finished the e-Porsche yesterday. I'm actually sat in the Range Rover, my girlfriend's in the Porsche right now, but I have the receipt here and thank goodness we've got a brand new stamp in the uh, original service booklet, which is really nice to see just under here. Let's see if we can do that. E-Porsche, Porsche Specialists, 130,000 miles on the 10th of November 2021, major service. So it's cool, it's good that we've got that in there now. Uh, will help obviously with the resale of the car. But look, I wanted to tell you how much the service costs. So the service costs £325 plus VAT, so about £400 to me or just under. And I have to say, very, very happy. I drove the car back yesterday, absolutely no problems. The only thing I can notice, and, and now I know what it is, is a little bit of knocking from the suspension. And that is probably those uh, big struts that we noticed had a little bit of play earlier on in the video. Can I just say a huge thank you to Chris, if you're watching Chris in particular, thank you so much. Um, it was extremely informative for me, but I'm sure for everyone that's watched this video, hearing your direct insight on the car as you were going through it. So thank you so much for letting me stick a microphone on you. That's been really helpful. I hope you guys have uh, really enjoyed this video. I've certainly um, really enjoyed making it yesterday and, and editing it today. Can't recommend the guys at ePorsche enough. I was genuinely very, very happy with, with them. I thought they were very professional and very uh, passionate about what they do. It's clear to see, to be honest, that they are. And of course, £390 for a major service on my Porsche. Actually, very, very reasonable. I mean, the first service I had on my Z4 when I bought that many years ago was over 600. So, interestingly enough, I'm not sure the Porsche is necessarily going to be any more expensive to run than my Z4. We'll have to see. And of course, Chris did point out that there are suspension components that will, uh, will need a refresh at least within the next year. Whether or not I do that within my ownership time, I'm not sure, but you'd probably be looking upwards of a thousand pounds, I would guess, to sort of do everything. So that is something to factor in as well. But the fact that I'm now, uh, well, just over four grand into this car, and as far as we're aware, it's a perfectly running, lovely specification, Boxster S, I'm very, very happy indeed. So for once, I think, and I don't want to jinx anything, but for once, I think I've made a good purchase. So over the moon with it. Big thanks again to ePorsche for letting me stick a camera in their faces. Very happy with them. Thought they were great. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. 
Do make sure to comment on the exhaust situation, whether I should do something with the exhaust on the Boxster, and also make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you want to check out ePorsche and some of the other businesses that were mentioned, check the links in the description. They're all there for you to go and have a look. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you all very, very soon.